So let's start with the classic. Is this thing on? <laughs> check, check, check. Everybody, welcome to Bulgaria PHP Conference 2019. It is an extreme pleasure to see you all here. This was quite a hard work to get uh, people here this year. It's a really great, great pleasure and honor to have you all. Thank you for coming. My name is Milko Kosturko. Uh, with my wife Burjana, we did a lot. We put a lot of effort in the past year to create the best experience, the best conference uh, for you all. We've got the best speakers. We've got the best food. We've got the best of everything. So please enjoy, learn, network, meet people, have fun. Now, before we begin, I would like to thank our sponsors because without them, this would have been absolutely impossible because truth is we don't have money <laughs> so I would like to start with SiteGround they are the people who actually started this conference in 2015 then continued it in 2016 and they're the people who helped us bootstrap all the things here and this is why they're the bootstrap sponsor and they're the conference founder SiteGround thank you for the help thank you for the know-how well, without you it would have been as great I would also like to thank our gold sponsors uh, in alphabetical uh, order, Isobar, JetBrains, Noble Hire, Reward Gateway, Takeaway, Twilio. And of course, our general media partner, Investor Media Group. Again, without you, none of this would have happened. Thank you very much. Make sure to stop by their boots and check out what they've got for you. Thank you again. Now, about the important stuff that everybody needs to know. First of all, this year, for the first time, we're live streaming the conference. So, hello and thank you to everybody who's watching us now in the internet. Uh, for those of you who would like to uh, tell your friends, you can see the, you can look, uh, you can watch the, the, the conference uh, at uh, bgphp.org. I would like to thank our keynote speakers. Uh, Carl Evans, uh, Paul Jones, and Mikhail Ilinchev. And I would like to tell you a little bit about the program. So this year, the format is we have four, 40 minutes per session. Uh, and then we have uh, 20 minutes of uh, coffee pause. Now, the coffee pause uh, is going to, we're going to have coffee and tea and refreshments and snacks all day long through all the coffee pauses. Uh, and uh, of course, the lunch break is going to be longer. It's uh, going to be about an hour and a half. Note that we're starting at different times today and tomorrow. You can see the exact schedule into your badges, like those. Inside of them, on the inside, if you take the paper out, uh, inside of them, there is the whole schedule printed. We have three tracks th this year. This is uh, uh, the main track, the side ground track in this hole. Uh, we have two more tracks on the sides. These are Ty's track and the Agile track. 
Now what is a surprise and something new that we're going to try to do this year is in the Agile track we're going to help hold an unconference. An unconference, for those of you who haven't seen one, is a place where everybody can sign up and make their presentation or share an idea or just tell us about their I don't know, whatever they find interesting. So if you're an attendee, if you're a speaker, anybody can, literally anybody can sign up. The, uh, there is a board over there uh, on which you can sign up. You can do a five minute talk, 10 minute talk, 20 minute talk. We'll be happy to hear this. This is going to be uh, today and tomorrow. Please join in, it's gonna be really fun. Uh, okay. We will also have beer, which we're going to start serving from noon. We would like to uh, uh, thank our beer partners, Bending, who got the beer for us, so thank you. That is one of the most important stuff. Also very important, the catering. As I said earlier, we're gonna have snacks and refreshments all day long throughout the coffee breaks and the lunch is going to be exquisite food, thanks to Renee Catering. They're our catering partners, so thank you. And thanks also to Mansion, who are today's lunch uh, sponsors. So they're helping us with the lunch today. So thank you, Mansion, for the great meals that we're going to have. Also, thank you, Paysera, for the coffee breaks that we're going to have throughout the whole day. We're going to have a lot of parties, par uh, party and surprises as well. We're going to have a lot of games. So for that, we would like to take party management, which uh, who are the people who stand behind the games that you'll find in the hallways joining. There are going to be prizes from our sponsors, so please do. And for the streaming that we're doing, thanks to Wikwitmind. Really big thanks. Uh, if you haven't picked your goodie bag yet, you can do this on the information desk below. You can do it at any time of the day or tomorrow. So if you don't want to crumble with the people, you know, just pick it whenever you're ready. Uh, pretty much that's it. Oh my God, I forgot to sit there. Oh Jesus Christ. We're going to end this day with a party. So at the end of this day, the last talk is not going to be a talk. We're going to have a panel on PHP Fig. So after the panel, right after the panel, we're holding a party for you guys. So outside, in the hallway, there's going to be some drinks, there's going to be some food, there's going to be some nice music, there's going to be lots of beer, of course, thanks to the partners. Go outside, talk about the, uh, the, the talks, network, meet the speakers, ask them to sign you their, their t-shirt. Today, this year, our t-shirts are white. The, our t-shirts are white so you can take signatures on them. You'll find markers on the information desk. Uh, so, I would like also to introduce our hosts. Uh, for this call, our host and also keynote speaker is going to be Mikhail, Mikhail Irinchev. In the side ground, uh, in that, that's the side ground track. In the ties track, it's going to be Buyan Yordanov. And in the agile track, Albert Pershar. And Albert is also going to be in charge of the Unconf. So, thank you all. Uh, I would like to thank NDK. I would like to invite you also to use uh, our uh, Wi-Fi. It's uh, BGPHP, it's open, so just sign in. And don't forget, of course, when you sign in to tweet, to share, our official hashtag is BGPHP19. Pretty much that's it. I think you can uh, find your way around the venue. We've got a big terrace. You can smoke there, we got games downstairs, we got the lazy track, oh my god, the lazy track, you can, you can look at all, you can watch all the talks that are happening in the lazy track at TV sets with headphones on, so you don't disturb anybody, uh, you can discuss the talks that are going on, we've also got video games there, text to win pint, we've got some arcade games, uh, we also have beer there, so that's the relaxation zone, that's the chill zone, the lazy track. Last. Last thing I'd like to say, uh, I hope we don't need it, really hope that we don't need it, but we got a medical theme on, on site, so if uh, anything bad happens to you, if you don't feel well, let us know, we'll get the doctors. Uh, the ambulance is waiting, hope nobody uses it. All right, so without further ado, please, let me introduce our opening keynote speaker this year, Mikhail Ilinchev.
I think we're all set. Hello. I would also like to welcome all of you here today. It's, uh, I'm really, really excited, hyper excited to be here and to be doing this. Uh, thanks again to Milko and all the sponsors that made this thing happen. It's, it's again a dream come true. It's a dream coming true for the third time in a row, which is absolutely amazing. A uh, few words about me. Uh, my name is Mikhail Irinchev. I have been a web developer since year 2003, roughly, uh, when these people at SiteGround believed that I can actually write code, and it turned out that I actually learned to do this. Uh, so I work at SiteGround, I am organizer of the Bulgaria PHP user group, and also a co-organizer of the Bulgaria PHP conference 2015-2016 uh, and 2019. I am a father and a husband to two very nice ladies you're going to see later on. I'm a home brewer uh, and a beer fan, very passionate. Uh, it will be evident throughout the lecture because you'll get to hear beer a lot of time. Uh, excuse me about that if you don't like that drink. And because of my love of beer, I'm also co-founder of a small company called True Beer. It's actually a home brewing supply shop in Sofia, Bulgaria that me and my wife have. This is my family. Uh, it's uh, three of us cruising somewhere in Arizona, I think. Oh, I don't want, I don't want the, the, the menu on the side. Sorry. <laughs> so this is three of us uh, cruising somewhere, looking for the nearest uh, burger diner. And this is the primary social group I belong to. We're going to talk about community today. So this is the, the basic community that I do belong to, my family. This is my wife, Petya. We like traveling a lot. Uh, we like uh, visiting different places, possibly on two wheels, if possible. Bulgaria is a beautiful country to, to travel, uh, all to, to, to all our uh, guests from abroad. I do recommend visiting, traveling the mountains, especially the, the south of Bulgaria, the Rodopi region is beautiful. This picture is taken somewhere there. And I like brewing, as I said. Uh, this is my wife and I. Uh, we're brewing and we're having an argument over the hops or something. Probably at that moment, this, this picture, this occasion is known as the battle at Hops Deep. And then, it's, uh, aside from brewing, we also like giving away the beer that we brew. Uh, this is us again at the holiday uh, of the Home Brew Association of Bulgaria. It was in Ruse. Uh, we Basically, we're giving away a lot of beer to people, and they were helping with coins that help for charity. Uh, anyway, this is another community that I'm part of, the Bulgarian Home Brewers Association, but I'll talk about this later and some other time probably. And this is us again in front of our shop in, in Sofia about home brewer supplies. The reason we opened this is because we like to brew every day, and it was hard to get supplies, so I needed a shop in the neighborhood to go, and that's pretty much it. A few disclaimers. Uh, this is the second soft talk I do ever, so please be patient with me. Also, the first opening keynote I do ever, uh, and the first talk that I'm going to use so many times, the I word, because it's a talk about me. It had to be about me, not because I love myself, but because it has to explain my involvement in several communities that are participated throughout my life and how, I, how they managed to change my life. So, it had to be with the I keyword, sorry about this. There is a lot of borrowed stuff, a lot of repetitions, so please excuse me. About the borrowed stuff, uh, Cal Evans, Mr. Cal Evans, please excuse me, he will have to, will have to settle some copyrights afterwards. I, I hope you don't mind. So, you, most of you, I assume, are programmers. You have to see the do not repeat yourself ruined all over this lecture. I will repeat these three words over and over again. Community, community, community. Almost like that guy, I do not remember him. I'm not going to run on stage and clap all the time because I'm not that athletic like him and I'm, that, I'm not that good looking at him. So uh, anyway, uh, you get to hear development a lot, but development in the broader sense of the word development, more like uh, how we develop as a person, not about the software we develop. And also, the third one I already mentioned about beer. If there are any beer drinkers, please excuse me. I'll have to 
I, I have to apologize to you, but you get to hear this word a lot. Hopefully, I'll manage to bribe you with some prizes here. These elephants are here not just for show up. They're going to go to two persons in the, in the, in the audience today, uh, a bit later. I mean, during this talk, not that much later. So let's define community. Uh, the simplest and closest to what I understand definition I found in the simple English Wikipedia, which says a community is a group of living things sharing the same environment. If we talk about people, they usually have shared interests and beliefs and needs, which affects their identity. So the, the stress here, the emphasis is on shared interests and identity, because we, we we love to come together and uh, belong to a group because this group shares our beliefs, our interests. We feel good there and we strive together to achieve something. So this talk is about three of the communities that I really uh, picked out to, to, to show to you that really shaped my life in, in some way. Community number one would be the gamers community. Uh, I, don't, I cannot really see a lot of... Uh, of people from because of the projectors, but how many of you like gaming? How many of you are gamers? Hands, please. Awesome, good amount. Uh, I don't really have my own computer when I started gaming long, long time ago in the 90 year 2000 and uh, year 1990. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I played games wherever I could find them. Um, in, and talking about gaming, the, the, the name of this place, NDK, in English is NPC. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's a non-player character to those of you who are not gamers. Uh, anyway, uh, mostly, uh, I was mostly involved in the gaming community in Sofia, Bulgaria, because back then there was no internet, or at least there was no internet in Bulgaria. I just started the dial-up thing and everything, so we mostly played sitting on, on a shared computer at, at somebody's home. And the size of the community is big, obviously. This is the first computer game I ever played. It doesn't look very beautiful. It's actually a skiing simulator. You start up there in that far corner, and you should make your way down through the gates. If you pass all of them, you win. It gradually gets uh, quicker and quicker and harder, obviously. This game I did not play on a computer, or at least not a computer in the general, uh, generally accepted uh, meaning of the word. I played on one of these machines. It's actually a Hewlett Packard oscilloscope. Uh, it was in the Technical University of Sofia, where my father worked at that time, and he would load up an uh, external input-output device, a uh, magnetic tape reader, and he would make this oscilloscope load games and <laughs> so that I could play games on it. And you use these tiny buttons on the bottom below the screen to choose left or right and all that stuff. It was amazing at that time. Later on, um, Bulgaria, at that time, was the, the most famous personal computer was named Pravets. Uh, there was a whole family of these computers, Pravets 8M, 8C, 8A. They were pretty much a copy of the Apple II computer at that time. And there was, a, there was a place in my neighborhood that opened a few years later that would have like six of those, and you go there and you pay by the hour to play games. The first game that totally, totally uh, impressed me, and I was like, I was thinking about that game during my sleep, was the Karateka. Uh, how many of you actually got to see this game and play it? Hands, wow, 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 I did not really expect that. Man. I, I expect like a couple of people here. Awesome. The Karateka was uh, my first experience with really action-packed kind of gaming. Uh, and this, is the <laughs> this was the, the 5.25 inch disc that uh, it, uh, it was distributed in. This version is for the Apple II. If you had a Commodore, you would need a different one, which looked like this. It was much fancier. This is the way it looked. Of course, I'm joking. It's obviously impossible because this guy on the right would step into the hole and fall. So it didn't, it didn't look that way. Anyway, uh, so it's now time to give away the first elephant today. And I have a question for you. If you have one of these, and uh, it's a single-sided, what would you do? How many, of these, how many of you use this one? Hands, please. Can you please stand up, all of you? <laughs> awesome. So the award will go to the first person that will tell me, what would you do to make this, this double-sided? I saw a hand there. Sorry, it's just, it's not fair. Life is not fair. I'm looking and I, I saw a hand there first. So the, this gentleman over there, uh, please answer over there with the uh, lady. 
Excellent. You put a hole in it. This is what you do. You punch a hole on the side and it would make it a double sided disc. Great. Uh, you choose the rainbow diversity elephant or the Amsterdam. No, it was the, the PHP architect one. All right, then. I'm going to, to try to troll. Almost. So for those of you who do not feel very well because they didn't win an elephant, I'm going to have a second question and we are done with the prizes. Uh, you remember that game? Doom, it was awesome. The ID software uh, era of gaming was amazing. So uh, the first one who is going to put a hand up and tell me what was, what was the cheat code, what does the cheat code IDKFA do? Okay, I saw first hand in the third row over there, two persons, first, yes, please. Excellent answer. It actually means keys, fire, arm, armor. That's what IDKFA stands for. Excellent, congratulations. Well, that was it. Uh, less is, uh, the rest of the stuff is more boring. You can go drink beer, but I'm joking. Beer is not open yet, so you cannot do this, sorry. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons uh, with my involvement in the gaming community, besides walkthroughs and how to go past the Hellgate in Karateka and how to beat the damn bird and all that stuff. Uh, and because uh, 640k turned out to be way not enough for a lot of programs, especially games, I learned how to utilize the, the upper memory area, the high memory area, all that stuff. I, I learned how to get a CD-ROM running later on. I learned how to configure a sound blaster. Sound blaster would cost pretty much the amount of money you would buy a very expensive smartphone these days. It was, it was uh, crazy uh, money. And you le learned all about the IRQ, DMA, all that stuff that you need to set up so that you can play games with sound. I remember those files back in the day. <laughs> Can't fix this out exactly, but <laughs> well, that was, that was the 90s. That was the 90s and uh, there was the, the, the DOS operating system. Later they, they carried on into Windows, I believe, uh, both of them. Oh, but besides learning about games, the whole thing fired an emotion, a desire in me, uh, a passion about computers, a passion about programming, uh, the, the curiosity of what happens be behind the screen, what makes these figures move and attack me and die, and what happens when I press the trigger. It, it just uh, fired in me the whole curiosity about programming and computers in general. So later on, my father got me my own computer. It was like a second-hand version of the Commodore. Uh, and he signed me up for programming lessons, and it was awesome. This is where I started pretty much my career <laughs> career <laughs> as a developer. Uh, and so this was pretty much about the gaming community, and now I'm going to continue with a, um, a something that happened to me a bit later in my life, during my high school year, years. Uh, the same person, my father, decided it, it's going to be great if he signed me up for a program called Exchange Student Program. So what happened that I, when, I was, when I was 11th grade in Bulgaria, I traveled to the US and I, I stayed a full year there, a few full school year in uh, the home of the tigers. <laughs> You'll get to know what the home of the tigers is in just a little bit. So year 1998, 1999, I was in a small town, actually it's classified as a village called Versailles, Ohio. For all the confused people out there, this is Versailles, pretty much the same. It's the same spelling as, as the name in French, but since it was in the US, people there would pronounce it Versailles. Uh, so I'm gonna keep calling it Versailles, excuse me about it, but that's the name of the town. Uh, and the size of the community is medium, it's like two, two or 3,000 people. Geographically speaking, Versailles is located somewhere there in Ohio, very close to the, the big lakes, the nearest big the city to it was Dayton, Ohio, and it is a very, very flat country. Uh, those of you who have been in Ohio know that it's pretty much farmer country, and for a person from the Balkans, like me, it was very hard in the beginning because I'm used to seeing a mountain everywhere. You walk outside here, you see the Vitusha mountain, you see the, the Balkan mountains in the far north, and I was, I was like this over there. I was like turning 260 degrees, seeing these cornfields all the way I can see. And I was like, what happened? Where are the mountains? 
it's it's na it's named home of the tigers because the Versailles Tigers was the the name of the sports team. Pretty much uh, every every sports team there in Versailles were the Tigers. Whether there was American football, uh, baseball, it doesn't matter. Uh, they are particularly keen on their football, I mean American football, and for disambiguation purposes in this lecture I'm going to keep calling it football and I'm going to call the European football soccer so that we kind of know what I'm talking about. Uh, so they, they managed to win their state championship in their high school division uh, five out of ten years in the 90s. They won 1990, 93, 94, 95 and 98 when I had the pleasure to be there, which is awesome. The family I was staying with had four sons. And they had me like a fifth child there as an exchange. It was awesome. And they had given birth to a fine quarterback and a fine wide receiver, I think, was the position. I don't know. I still don't know much about the rules of American football, although I watched a lot of the games. Uh, so they were, they were a football family. They were very active. They were like most of the families in Versailles. They traveled with the football team everywhere they played. They went to every single game. Some of the games were like all the way across the state up north towards uh, Canada, but they still traveled and they still uh, uh, supported their team everywhere, which is awesome. I got to travel a lot in a big camper. It was awesome. Um, well, four years earlier, something happened uh, in the summer of 1994. How many of you here are Bulgarians born before year 1990? All right, so. Half of the audience would appreciate some of this, probably. Uh, what happened there was uh, that we had this football team that somehow managed, soccer team, excuse me, European football team, uh, that managed to qualify and get, um, uh, get a very high standing in the World Soccer Championship of 1994, which was played in the US at that time. Uh, unlike the Tigers, they only did the miracle once in 1994. But it was crazy. Uh, this was the, pretty much the standing of the teams at that uh, competition. We started with a terrible loss, 3-1 to one from Nigeria. And I know there is a gentleman here in this room who is going to appreciate this. If you are here, please stand up, a gentleman from Nigeria. All right, hello. I still remember the names of some of the Nigerian players that kicked our ass that first game. It was like Babangida, Okocha, and Tamukachi. I remember these people. It was, uh, it was crazy. We started off that bad. They, they beat, us, beat the crap out of the Bulgarian team. But then we kind of kicked off, and then we won against Greece, Argentina, Mexico after penalty shots. Uh, Germany. Nobody believed Bulgaria could beat Germany in, in soccer. It was like out of our minds. Nobody here believed it's going to happen. It happened. And finally, we reached the semifinals where we lost to Italy. And uh, the game for third and fourth place was a terrible loss from Sweden. Doesn't matter. This was the summer of 1994 in Sofia. Uh, on the left, you see the, the soccer team being welcomed on the national stadium. And on the right, you see the people in the streets of Sofia. I don't know how they converted a Trabant into a convertible, but it looks amazing. And this is why I chose this picture. So, so basically, uh, you know how strict drinking laws are in the US compared to over here. And back then, when, when the Tigers won the championship in 98, when they back, came back home in, in the town, it was same like summer of 94 in Sofia. Everybody was in the streets celebrating, drinking. Cops didn't really care about this. And it was, it was an uh, amazing emotion that I got to, um, to live again there. And I got this sense of community, how these people supported their team, how they celebrated their victories together. Uh, somehow, I also found my place there in this uh, sports community. Uh, since I came from Europe and I was kind of uh, aware of the rules of soccer, uh, I don't know if you remember this guy. Uh, he's, uh, believe it or not, he was a, a, a hero at that day, the, the national goalkeeper of Bulgaria, Borisov Mikhailov. These days, he's more known for his nightclub appearances, and he's kind of controversial. But back in the day, he was a hero. Uh, and my father, we, we used to live in the same apartment building with Borisov Mikhailov, like two floors aside. Uh, he used to live like two floors above my apartment. And when I was in the States, my father asked him, Bobby, can you please give me like an official rule book of soccer? Uh, because my son, 
volunteered to be a referee there. Uh, Versailles had a kids' soccer team, uh, grades one to four, and they needed referees. They needed people that know the rules that can uh, referee for the kids. So I signed up, and I, I, go, I go there two times a week with my bicycle. I, I would run with the kids. I turn out, uh, I learned that you, you need to run more than the players if you're a referee. It's terrible. Uh, but it was, it was so fun. So <laughs> that guy, he sent me these two items over airmail. The one on the left was the official football, soccer, sorry, uh, soccer rules and recommendations to referees. The one on the right was the whistle, the official referee whistle uh, at that time. And uh, I didn't really get to use the book a lot because the rules over there were quite different. They would play four quarters by 15 minutes and there was not really offsides. There was not like penalty shots where they decided like drop ball and you just start kicking. But it was so fun. Uh, none of the parents mentioned any of my relatives, especially my mother, uh, like it happens in Bulgaria on soccer games. Uh, everybody loves the referee's family, the whole of it. But nobody, it didn't happen to me. Even at the end, they gave me, like at the end of the year, they gave me like a check for $100 out of gratitude. I was so touched. I never cashed that check. It's, it's still in my attic somewhere with my photos from the US. I, it, I just want to hold to it. And it's, it's a very touching memory. So some lessons learned from community number two. First, US English ain't bad. Uh, I, I thought I knew, I knew English when I go there. I used to go to the Faro schools of English, which pretty much teach you British English. You go there first three months, I'm like, what? But anyway, uh, I kind of managed to learn English. I, I kind of almost quit smoking. I was smoking at the time. Smoking is bad. It doesn't go well with running. Uh, so I cut down cigarettes to one per day, which was good for me. I later quit smoking totally. And I learned basic American football rules. I learned something very, very important for me, that strong communities breed champions. These people were so supportive of, uh, of, their, uh, of their community, of everybody there, was helping out with whatever they can. They would bake food for the games. They would bring refreshments. It was, it was amazing to be part of this. And I was so honored to, to be there. And I learned what is to belong, even to a community where you're a total outsider to begin with. I somehow managed to graduate there in the US. Uh, I still do not have a Bulgarian high school degree. <laughs> uh, so when they ask me, please present high school diploma, I, I don't have one. Uh, somehow the idea was to keep studying in the US, but then the summer started. I went back to Bulgaria for the summer. Uh, I met this beautiful girl, uh, and we had an amazing summer hiking in the Rodopi Mountains. Uh, she turned out to be the love of my life, and we have been together 19 years now. It's my wife, Petya. And I decided I'm not going back to the States. Eventually, I went back to the States for just like a couple of months because I was enrolled in the university. I took all the exams I could. I applied for the only university that would take me in Bulgaria, the American University in Bulgaria, because they, they were the only ones that were, that were okay with an American high school diploma. And I told my father I was... I, I applied there. I told my father they accepted me. I didn't know the result yet. And he said, I'm coming back. They accepted me in the American University. It's okay. And he said, okay. And talking about my father, that's him on the left, the one with the beard. Now I'm the one with the beard. Uh, his name is Dmitry Rinchev. And when I came back to two days later after I land, I received a letter from the American University that says, you're accepted to enroll. And I show it to him and he's like, didn't, didn't you already enroll there? I'm like, well, technically, no. But now I, I know for sure that I am. And he, he kind of realized what happened there. He's like, you pulled it off very well. <laughs> so he was a great person. I, I need to mention him in this presentation because he shaped the way I think about people in community. Uh, he was a very, very global person of his time. He, he was born in Plovdiv, but graduated from high school in Havana, Cuba. And he spent most of his life in Sofia, but traveled all over the world, which was not a common thing if you were in Bulgaria during the communist era. 
He was pioneer of satellite, satellite television in Bulgaria. He was a microelectronics engineer. He worked in Technical University, the Bulgaria Academy of Sciences, a lot of places. We had a family business in the 90s, putting up those satellite dishes before the big cable networks took over and we kind of uh, lost, people lost interest in this. But he, you should have seen his clients, everybody loved him. Everybody was like a friend of him. He had this aura of positivism. He was a very generous person helping orphanages and everything. So you just have to make friends with him when you meet him. It's not possible to not be friends with this guy. It was, it was crazy. Uh, this is a shot taken from his work, uh, building some a uh, flat satellite dish that will be put up on a train or something that will track automatically the satellites above or anything. Well, he could explain how a nuclear submarine works to a three-year-old child in five minutes. He was that talkative and truly, truly a community guy. He loved everyone, everyone loved him. So I should say a couple words about him because on that day, on yesterday's day actually, uh, 16 years ago, he passed away. Uh, but he taught me some of the most important lessons of my life. He told me, everybody can win, but you have to learn how to lose. And I did not understand that at the time, because what does it mean to learn how to lose? And later I kind of understood, because it's easy when you win, but when you lose, you have to learn how to collect all your uh, stamina, everything that you can to stand up again and keep fighting. And that's what I learned from him, the most important lesson. So if you he can hear, him, hear me from somewhere, uh, I love him very much, and I would like to say to him, wish you were here, and shine on you, crazy diamond. <laughs> Thank you. So we come to community number three, the BGPHP community. I love these people. Time frame, year 2013, up until present days, uh, place Bulgaria and size bigger and bigger. How many of you here participate in the meetings of Bulgaria PHP user group? Awesome, awesome. Thank you. I love you all guys. It all started for me with this guy. Uh, many of you know him. This is Michelangelo Van Damme and uh, I met him back in 2012 in uh, Santa Clara where ZenCon was taking place. And I said something that smoking is bad, it's really bad, and I don't really smoke with one exception. Uh, I smoke at conferences. And <laughs> I do this because it's, uh, it's, it's a very social thing to meet someone on a balcony smoking and start, start up a conversation. It would be the same if we didn't smoke and we had beer, obviously. But it's just how it started for me and Michelangelo. He doesn't drink alcohol, but he smokes. And we met on this balcony there, and he said, uh, do you have a user group in Sofia? And I was like, oh, no. And he was like, well, you should start it. And it took me a while to kind of evolve this idea into my head. Uh, a year later, in 2013, October, exactly one year later, uh, we started Bulgaria PHP group with initial population of nine people. It was mostly side ground people because we had gone to conferences together. We were discussing this idea. We started a group in Facebook. We kind of invited people to come to the office. And we started do doing these weird Saturday morning meetings. Who does Saturday morning meetings? We didn't know much about the user groups that day. So we believed everybody would come on Saturday because they're very busy in the week. Totally crappy idea. They're wasted on Friday. Nobody wants to, to come up early on, on uh, Saturday morning. But anyway, some people started eventually showing up. And when you look at this picture, you can see faces kind of uh, repeating uh, all over. Uh, this here, I believe, although it is a very crappy picture, is Lubo Popov here. This is Lubo Anev, my colleague. Uh, him and Yuri Penkov helped me a lot starting this thing. There were, we three of us were actually the, the, the first people to start the, the, the user group meetings. Uh, then we kind of started growing up a little bit. You can see this beautifully shaped head here. This is, this is my dear friend and co-worker, Nikki Ivanov who is uh, also the home manager today here. He was a volunteer at the other uh, editions of the conferences, very active. And we kept growing and growing. See the, the beautiful head again. And uh, Lubo Popov here with the curly hair. Uh, the same people, Toshu is here in the, in, in, in the room. I saw him already. So it, it was beautiful because these people started coming, coming, coming more and more. Uh, gradually, uh, this thing exploded into this. 
And I should say that this would not have happened uh, definitely if it was not for SiteGround. SiteGround was very supportive of the community. I do not say this because I work there. I do not say this because SiteGround is a sponsor. This is the, the damn true. If SiteGround did not exist, if they did not help this community, it would not be the same thing. Especially, I would like to thank Miss Renata Tsankova sitting over there. Reni, sorry for pointing at you, but she was, uh, she was the person in the SiteGround management that uh, always supported this thing that said, wow, let's do this, let's do this crazy thing called Bulgaria PHP Conference. And SiteGround put a lot of effort back then. A lot of people worked for like six months to, to make this happen. Uh, so they're actually on the payroll there and they work for a conference, which is, <laughs> who does this? Anyway, uh, so how many of you were there back in, back in 2015? All right, from what I can see from the projectors, a lot of hands, nice. Uh, Michelangelo was there, obviously, and uh, he started this thing. Uh, he, I would like to note, can you please see what's in the upper, oops, terribly. In the upper right corner, it says PHP Belgrade community on this slide. How many of you have visited PHP Serbia? Awesome. To all of you who have not done this, I strongly recommend uh, they have a call for papers going on until Christmas, I think so. So if you want to go to a conference for free, put up a, a talk and uh, just submit, it might work. It worked for me <laughs> every now and then. So uh, uh, if you're not accepted as a speaker, do go visit. It's like five hours ride from Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, and it's an awesome conference. It's the end of May each year. So do visit PHP Serbia. It's awesome. Uh, my Machiangelo started a lot of communities like us, like PHP Serbia, like uh, many other uh, events. So he was truly serving the community and he told me one has to serve the community. I took it a little bit too literally and I started serving the community when uh, our partners from Binding Bulgaria, Branko, came on this conference. They literally sent their son there on Saturday morning to pour us beer. The boy was, I, I mean, the boy had a heart for a Friday night, obviously he's a young man. And he was like pouring beer there for us and I just stand beside him and decided to help a little bit because <laughs> it was hard to serve all the people that were lining up for the beer. Uh, but it tells a lot about community and uh, the partners that are supporting our community. They, they, they come personally to, to attend and help. And uh, So no, nomadic life began after this conference because SiteGround office kind of grew and we couldn't meet in the same hall because it did not exist anymore. Uh, it was full of uh, workstations now. So we st started visiting other people's offices and to, to believe that this is not a paid SiteGround talk, I, should, I will mention the name of a company who's not even a sponsor of this uh, conference. Uh, I would mention Proxyat because they had it so many times in their office. Those of you who remember this picture back here in the end, uh, it ended up with uh, uh, porter beer spilled over all over it, and uh, we, we imagine have to pay like 2,000 level or 3,000 level to recover. We started brushing it with paper towels. I kind of felt like Mr. Bean with this uh, the picture of uh, Windsor's mother or whatever it was. I, I was just hoping the colors would not run. Thankfully, it was a very colorful picture, so uh, it didn't really show. Uh, but I, I was like, these people will never invite us again. But they kept inviting us over and over. We kept visiting this office. It was it was amazing time, and you see two familiar faces here. This is Milko and this is Borana. Uh, they started showing at these meetings, uh, participating in this community. Milko participated in the community as a volunteer. It was his first appearance as the, the first edition of Bulgaria PHP. He was a volunteer and now he's, he's running a damn conference, which is awesome. This, this is how communities shape our life and identity, how much they change us. Uh, we found out that people were willing to pay our pizza and beer and have it in, the, in their office just to talk for a couple of hours, which is amazing. Uh, thanks to all these companies, thanks to uh, Apihawk. Uh, I don't know if Pafkata is here in, in the hall, but Apihawk was another company that had a couple of time in our office. And we later started making uh, joint meetings with Laravel Bulgaria. This guy here in the front is uh, Javor, Javor Mikhail, the organizer of uh, Laravel Bulgaria. Javka, please stand up if you're here. Big applause to, to Javor. Um, so gradually we, we grew uh, bigger and bigger, we merged with other groups, we started having meeting, meetings at strange places, nomadic life as I said. We've met at cinemas, 
It's hard to have a meeting in a cinema lobby because you have to have very good timing of when people come out of a movie and come back in a movie. They, they will walk past you, they will speak loudly, obviously. Uh, so it was a very uh, timing problem. And the road goes on forever and the party never ended. We met at pubs, we had a lot of those beer meetings, what we called here. Uh, and then what happened next year was 2016, the, the Bulgaria PHP conference, again, the, the Game On conference. How many of you were there? Awesome, awesome. And this is Mr. Carl Evans speaking, basically owning the stage and doing his magic at Bulgaria PHP 2016. And by magic, I mean magic and it works and show you how it works. You must have seen this guy here. Uh, his name is Bujan Yordanov. He's also going to be the MC of, of that track over there today, right? Uh, and Bujan Yordanov was the first person there that was really touched by, uh, by these community talks that these people do, especially Cal Evans. He has this thing inspiring people. Uh, you'll see later to, tomorrow, obviously. But what can I say about Bujan? It says it on his t shirt. It's better to share. He's a very sharing and giving guy. Uh, he's a very, very uh, community oriented guy. He started this. Any people from Varna here? All right. A good group there. Do you participate in these meetings? If you don't, you should. Uh, Bujan, Bujan is a very clever guy. He started this just three days after Bulgaria PHP 2016. It didn't take him a year, like an old guy like me, to, to figure out what to do. He was hands-on, started the whole thing three days after, after the conference, which is great. Thank you very much, Bujan, for doing this. And then we kept having more and more nomadic meetings. Milko again there, uh, other familiar faces. Thank you all, the ones that I don't mention. We come up to this point in time. I would like to present to you people who are truly rock stars. And this is not because Milko looks like a rock star, sings like a rock star. Probably Bogan also sings like a rock star. I have not heard none of them sing, but they look amazing. Uh, they are great people. And uh, they had the balls, they had the courage to put up this, which is amazing because they did it on their own. They did not have uh, like the, the huge financial, financial potential or they, they took the chance, they took the risk to doing this uh, and they, they turned Bulgaria PHP into even more, uh, more of a community organized conference than it has ever been. So please, your applause for Milko and Boriana. <laughs> so here we are. It's the MPC, <laughs> it's all the National Palace of Culture, Bulgaria PHP Conference 2019, a truly community organized conference and like the best ones out there I've been to. PHP Serbia, PHP Benelux, Sunshine PHP. Those of you who consider going, visiting a conference in the States, I recommend Sunshine PHP. It's one of the most amazing conferences I've ever been to. Plus, it's like February, and here in Europe, it's damn cold. You go there, it's in Miami. It's like 20-something degrees. It's awesome. But that's not the awesome thing about the conference. It's uh, the community that organizes it and all the people who go there every year. It's, it's an amazing community there. Uh, Mr. Adam Cope is one of the organizers of this conference. Uh, some lessons learned from the Bulgaria PHP community. Uh, first, community is really contagious. What can you say? Milko started as a volunteer, now he runs a conference. It's crazy. Uh, some people start as attendees, and uh, now I know they've spoken at many events, not only the PHP user group, but uh, PHP conferences around, not only PHP conferences. So uh, please, everyone, everyone can contribute. If you know something, if you have an idea to share, if you know that uh, you learned something interesting, you want to share it, share it. Please do share it because someone there in the hall will be very grateful to you. You don't have to be an expert at what you're talking to uh, to do a talk. <laughs> I'm the, the living proof of this. Uh, so please do participate in user group meetings. Uh, do talks at PHP user group meetings. They need speakers a lot. They are in dire need of speakers every time. So if you do this, you might end up applying for a conference. It's the cheapest way to go to a conference. Just apply for call for papers, they might accept you. You get to travel there, they pay you food, hotel, it's, it's amazing. And you meet new people, new friends, obviously. I'm, I'm joking, obviously not doing it about the food. Uh, strong communities breed champions. This is a repetition. Again, I, I said I'm going to have a lot of repetitions in this talk. 
Bulgaria PHP is truly a strong community that started breeding its own champions like Boyan, like Milko and Boyana, like Lubo Popov, who is an ambassador of this conference everywhere he goes, and many, many other people. I cannot really make an extensive list because there are so many people helping for this. Uh, and it feels so good to surf and belong. This is, this is the warm feeling you get inside when you do something about the community. Because I believe human beings, my father believed the same thing, that in general human beings are well intended and not evil. And sometimes stuff happens in their life that make them evil. But not every evil person is evil all the time and nothing is black and white. Uh, we are all shades of gray. So people are generally good and people generally feel good when they do good to other people. This is the same with communities. And it's, it's a perfect opportunity to meet a lot of new friends. I've, I've had several co-workers who started working uh, at SiteGround after meeting uh, us at uh, PHP user group meetings, at, uh, after the Bulgaria PHP conference. It's a perfect opportunity to build can network connections uh, and new friendships, which is amazing. And now coming to stuff that I stole or borrow, depends on the definition of the term, uh, we all bring something to the ta different to the table. This is what uh, Mr. Kyle Evans said uh, back in uh, PHP uh, 2016. I should stand behind his words because everybody can contribute something. Everybody can, uh, can help with something. And we are all valuable, no matter how much or how small our expertise is. The value of any conference that you attend is in the network that you build, the friendships that you make, and the conversations that you have. Another quote stolen from you, Cal, please excuse me, but I had to put this one up here because it's a conference, you should make the maximum out of it. Go outside, network, meet friends. Chances are the people you are sitting next to, if you don't know them, they're very much alike you because you're in a community. You have shared interests and shared beliefs. You might make wonderful friends. And just the last one, and we're finished here, uh, the one from Michelangelo. Join a local user group. I don't know if he said that, but he keeps repeating it all the time, so I believe he must have said that. Uh, join a local user group. If there's no one in, in your area, you are the person who needs to start one. So I'm passing this disease on to you, and I, hopefully it will pick up and it will infect you as quick as it can. It can, and so thank you very much. This keynote is over. Thank you. Thanks, mate. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, just uh, before we continue, I would like uh, to introduce Miss Elena Spirina, uh, who is going to tell us about the games that are going to happen around the venue because games have rules and you need to know them. So please. Elena. Hello to everybody. I'm very pleased that I'm here today. Just I saw too many men in the conference room. Do we have ladies? I saw one or two. Yeah, ladies, women who called. Can you stand up? Applause them. <laughs> That's great that we have already women in this profession, let's say. Okay. Um, I just want to say that we have two special corners. One that you can meet personally, James Bond and Angelina Jolie. And you can take pictures with them. This is our uh, special Agent 007 uh, photo corner. Because why we decided to be agent? Because you are agents for us too, but PHP agents. So you can take pictures there and play on Casino Roulette. We have another one fun corner with uh, special, let's say, more active games like Wooden Maze that you need to go with some fellows to play. So it's all about the networking. Also, we have Ring Toss and we have Jenga with special challenges. And why we put you challenges? We put you challenges for networking and we put you challenges for going digital because you create our World Digital. I don't understand nothing about PHP. I don't know how to code. And in some of the uh, challenges we have, we have uh, questions for you. And when I read them, I was surprised really, because I really don't understand anything from this. But maybe you will know. So we will have challenges like this question. What function is opposite to parse str? 
you know I don't know nothing. And talking about networking, it will be great if you do something even now in this conference room. Maybe you sit to somebody you know, but maybe you sit also to somebody you don't know. Maybe a new good friend. Or look on the row behind you. Behind you, on your back, you can have an enemy or a friend. <laughs> so meet them. Shake your hands. Can we make it now? Do you have somebody around that you don't know? Tell your names, who is working where, just a short networking. Do we have people that are doing this? No? Ah, here we have, okay. You know everybody? You know everybody. Do you know everybody? <laughs> Behind you? You? Okay, you're shaking hands. Names from what company, and maybe you can take your cigarette break together. That's all from me. Thank you. I think we have a coffee pause now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so this break is going to be rather short because uh, we ran kind of late. Uh, but after that, we're moving the conference in its normal tempo. So please. Uh, uh, check out your programs in your badges. Uh, we're having Mr. Stefan Prich tell, tell us about uh, CQRS. Uh, yeah, that, that was okay. I don't have uh, my program with me. So, Mr. Stefan Prich in this track, our no box, uh, and Matt Brunt in the two other tracks. So, we're going to see you in just a bit. Thank you.